I'm Warwick Cox. This is uh, how to present with confidence. So when we present with confidence, we always want to warm up first. It's just like when you're playing a sport, you always want to warm up. You don't want to run out and then start kicking a footy around because you might pull a muscle. And uh, it's exactly like when you do other things. So when, you, when you're speaking, you want to warm up your voice. So, you know, like singers do it. Singers, you'll hear singers go, oh, they do all the... I can't sing, so I'm not going to do it because it'll sound horrible. <laughs> so we do that. Uh, and that helps us feel more confident because if we can speak and we don't slur our words or we get confused in our words, then that can you know, undo our confidence. So we want to make sure our confidence is up, which is warming up. So I haven't actually warmed up for this one, but I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to get some uh, crowd participation. So everyone, can everyone stand up, please? So uh, first one we're going to do is arms up and sigh. So... <sighs> Uh, the next one is go bo 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 That's it. You sound like a cop. And the next one is go Just like when you're a kid, go So warm out your lips. And the next one is go la 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 Gives your tongue a little, uh, little workout. Um, and the next one is a siren, so go. Awesome, everybody can sit down. Great. So everyone's warmed up, everyone can get up here and speak. To give you an example, like I do most of my public speaking, or I do most of my public speaking, I guess, in front of, like, at footy. So I go and speak in front of, like, the team or at footy clubs and all, and all that type, and all those sort of crowds. And I would be driving to a game, and I knew I'd have to speak in front of my team, so I knew I'd have to, I didn't want to slur my words, because if I slur my words, then I feel unconfident. So I'd do all those things, and I'd be looking in the mirror, and I'd just be driving along to the game, and just going, ah, ah, and just like, ah, and just like screaming, turning a radio up, and just singing, like, singing my head off, just so my voice is warmed up. So when it came to actually present my message, I knew what I was talking about. Or it came out, of my, came out of my vocal cords correctly. And my voice actually worked. So, first thing, warm up. Next one is be big. So you want to be as big as you can. I learned this from an interview technique, which I don't know who, who taught me. Obviously, Ollie just uh, pointed it out as well. If you're really small, then you feel unconfident. So if you're, going towards an, if you're going into an interview and you're sitting there with your legs crossed and looking at your phone, then, you're going to be, then you go into an interview, then you're going to feel really unconfident. Whereas if you go in and you're sitting on the chair and you've got your, your arms out and your legs up, then... This guy's a wanker. Well, you know, then that gives you the confidence. It gives you the confidence and makes it... And as Ollie said, it actually does do some chemical things. So, and so does gambling. So if you want to feel confident, do a bit of gambling. And that actually gets the, gets the chemicals flowing in your brains. And then you feel more confident. So when you, you want to be as big as you can. And I remember before we did our, uh, our getaway presentation, we were standing out the back there, and Bell was Bell was, standing, Bell was in our team, obviously. And I was standing there, and I was going, oh. <laughs> doing this. And she's like, what are you doing? I was like, just make myself feel big. She's like, you're such a weirdo. It's just so weird. But that's, that's how you, you feel big, and then you walk out stage, you're half as big, but you still feel confident. Next one is lean forward. So not lean forward and uh, you know, sort of intimidate everybody, but lean forward. You know, so step on your toes. A lot of people when they public speak, they stand like this and they put their one leg behind the other one. And you can probably see this from me right now, I don't look that confident if I stand here like this. Whereas if I stand here like this, I look more confident. You'll see a lot of speakers, they walk around the stage, so they walk around and they'll always be walking forwards. Whereas if I was walking backwards and doing the moonwalk kind of thing, if I was just slowly walking backwards, I wouldn't look, I don't look confident, do I? And it actually affects me. So I, I feel less confident right now by walking backwards. Whereas if I'm walking forwards, and I'm speaking and I'm walking forwards, and I'm, I'm sort of owning the stage and I'm walking everywhere where I, where I want to go, then that gives me confidence. Because I'm moving forwards. And I'm moving forward and presenting my message. So if you are going to stay, stay still, it takes a lot of guts and a lot of confidence to stay in one place. If you are going to stay in one place, stay on your toes. Don't lean on your heels. You're not doing squats. You stay on your toes. And you can try not to bounce around, obviously, but you can stay on your toes. 
be a comedian. Tell a joke. Obviously, we started this presentation with everyone getting up and being silly and having a laugh, and it breaks the ice and it makes everyone feel more relaxed. And when people are more relaxed and they're less closed off, because right now, most people, except for uh, Amanda, <laughs> most people are sitting here and they feel open. <laughs> You can <laughs> so you're like, oh, well, she feels right. No, that, that's different. Don't do that in interview. <laughs> and you can see from the people you're talking to whether they're actually bringing a message in. If everyone's sitting there like this, then you need to open everyone up. You need to tell a joke. People people open up when they're laughing, and it's a really good way to do it. So yeah, we started off. I got everyone up to jump around. That made everyone open up. So there's that little tiny technique. Next one is stop. The person that owns the silence in the room usually owns the room. So if I've got some hecklers over there and I stop talking, and this happens at footy clubs all the time because people are always getting drunk and they're always talking. So you stand there and you go in front of the in front of everybody. We'll just wait for them to finish. And then everyone is like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, that's the other guys. And it can just drown them out. It can drown them out, but you haven't actually said anything. I guess it's the same as kids. Some of us have kids. Sometimes when the kids go crazy, you just sit there and you stop and look at them. And then they'll just go. <laughs> and then they'll stop talking as well. So if you do feel flustered in a presentation, just stop. Know where you are, just breathe. And that's, that's the next one, is breathing. So when you first walk out, you might have noticed why I did it right at the start there. Right, I sort of stood here and went, <sighs> right. You need to feel relaxed when you're up on when you're presenting. You need to feel like you own the room. A really easy way to do that is to stand there with confidence, on your toes, but breathe. Don't say anything. Just take a deep breath and relax. Just the next one. So when you feel relaxed, you own the room. And you're going to have more fun doing it as well. So think about your breathing and then think about relaxing. Some of the best speakers that I've ever seen are the, mo the most charismatic speakers. Some coaches that I've been around, they own the room. And they are just so good at getting everyone to get their message because they're so relaxed up on stage. You see some people when they're agitated and they want to fill with things and they just kick the dirt. <laughs> Probably not because there's no dirt on the dirt up here but, <laughs> but if you want to do that sort of stuff then you do feel nervous and it will make you feel nervous whereas if you stand there deep breath relax then you can portray your message sometimes when you get a little bit flustered and I do it as well because I'm not a very good public speaker like I want to be up here in public speaking but I personally I'm right down here I've probably practiced a fair bit to be down there but I want to be up here and that's one thing that I still need to work on is relaxing. So sometimes I get a little bit flustered, something doesn't work, and I just have to remind myself, just relax. You've got this. You can own the room, and you can be the, per be the person that everyone's focus is on by just relaxing. Another way to really relax when you first walk out or when you first start presenting is instead of talking to, see if I'm talking to the back wall and I'm not looking at anybody, it's very difficult. Whereas if I have a conversation, everyone, all of us in the room can have a conversation very confidently with one person. I can have a conversation with Sharip and I can just talk to Sharip one on one. And what's the difference between talking in a one on one situation compared to talking to a lot of people? Is the fact that we get a little bit nervous sometimes and we're, we're focusing on everyone's eyes at us. So one thing, you'll see presidents do it all the time. They're always sitting there, they're looking around. I'll have a conversation, I'll have a conversation and then I'll look at someone else. You want to look at people in the eyes because you want to talk to those people and bring them into the conversation. And sometimes when people are looking at you, you look at someone else and you look back at the person. Then you look at someone else and you look back at the person. <laughs> Amanda is actually looking at me, so she's not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> I mean, I'm like, my arms crossed anyway. <laughs> and you see a lot of uh, really, really good speakers do that. LeBron James is one of the best sports stars out there at the moment. And we all... All of us would probably know who LeBron James is. No, you don't have no. Anyway, he's a little tiny player. But basically, he does this thing before a, before a game where he gets the, uh, I think it's chalk, and he just goes bang and does that. And if there's 100,000 people in that stadium, or 40,000, I don't know how many people fit in those basketball stadiums, 
say 40,000, 100,000, yeah, say 40,000. He does that, 40,000 eyes are on him. Do you know what that does to his opposition? That crumbles their confidence because the whole crowd gives him his confidence. He's probably an extrovert, I'd, I'd probably say. Yeah? So he's got the crowd and he's owning the room and that's what this presentation is about. It's about feeling confident and owning the room and feeling like you can do whatever you want to, you can say whatever you want to say, you can do whatever you want to do while you're up here and everyone's going to focus on you and not look at their phones. You'll find that people who don't have the confidence, they'll be looking at their phones, they'll be like twiddling around with other things and they won't be looking at the speaker. Whereas the charismatic, probably the best, think of the best speakers you've ever seen, you just can not take your eyes off them. They just, they're mesmerizing. Everything that they do, you're just like, yep, yep, yep. And they could be like, jump up, and you're like, oh, I'll do that. Just because they have that power over you, because they've got the confidence and they're owning the room, they're owning the space they're in, which is a real talent. It's something that, I, I don't know if I'm owning this space well enough, because we can look back and look at the video later, and we can see if we, I can see if I am or not. And you, you know, you can probably determine that on me and give me some feedback later and see if I am owning the room. And if I'm not, then I need to work on that and I need to improve on that. But if I am, then that's something that I have been working on and I'm trying to do it as best I can. Um, like, you know when, you know, like you get um, confused and you forget what you're trying to say? And we all say this. We all say these tiny little things. Like, you know, I say, my wife said this to me once after a presentation of footy. She said, you say obviously so many times. And I was like, really? She's like, every time you speak, you go obviously this and obviously that and obviously that. And it's like, it's obvious to you. It's not obvious to everyone else. You stop saying obviously. And it was, it's a word that I keep saying. And now I've probably said it once. I'm going to say it a hundred times in the rest of this presentation. It's very hard. And you're mentally trying to think when you're up here, don't say these words. And this is, a, this is more, probably not more to focus on your confidence, but if you can not say these words, you come across as a more confident person. Think about a politician. If a politician like Barack Obama or, I don't know, who's our Prime Minister? Some idiot. <laughs> Mr. Rabbit. <laughs> Mr. Rabbit. Um, the White Rabbit. Yeah. Um, if he came up and he was on TV all the time saying, um, this, uh, well, sort of, I mean, he did have that little stint where he was like, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone thought, I'm probably be better than he currently is. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't fill you with great confidence. You think, if this guy can't speak in front of a camera or to his people, how the hell is he going to run a country? And he's probably not going to run a country very well. So it's some of those things that you've got to mentally think, don't say these things, don't say things, these things. And you're trying to remember what you have to say, and then you think you don't say these things, but you say them anyway. And you need a little reminder, like it'd be good if you could have a little, like a dog collar on your wrist, and every time you said, um, <laughs> you're like, yeah, and then I'm, oh, jeez. <laughs> They'll probably zap you out of it pretty fast. Be prepared. <laughs> That's another thing. A little bit out of focus. So when you're prepared, you have more confidence in your presentation. We did a presentation the other day and I wasn't very prepared for that and I didn't feel that confident and I personally think I didn't do that well in the presentation. But afterwards, someone said to me, nobody knew you weren't prepared. You could have winged it and you would have, and everyone would have thought, yeah, he's got this. So when you, even though you have to be prepared, like be prepared for yourself. So when people ask you questions, like Ollie's obviously very prepared for her, for her presentation. Because all the questions that came back at her, she knew how to answer them. So she's prepared, she knows the knowledge, she knows what she was talking about. So she can talk about that. If you're unprepared, if someone asks you a question, sometimes get a little bit flustered, or you might lose your place if you're unprepared. But sometimes when you're unprepared, and you do lose your place, just wing it. Just fake it. Because you never know, you might just work out at the end, and everyone thinks, wow, he really knew what he was talking about. And then you go, I kind of forgot half my presentation and I uh, forgot half the things I was going to say because I didn't practice them. Another thing with be prepared is practicing in front of the mirror or practicing your speech. So I can go, obviously I practice this one, I practice this with my wife. The first time I did it, I practiced with my wife and then I practiced for about two hours in front of the mirror. 
and I talk in front of the mirror all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the guy looking back is such a good conversationalist. <laughs> it gets me. <laughs> no, I've, I've been sitting in my, I'm sitting in our bedroom. We've obviously got big mirrors. That. Oh. <laughs> 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 that took my wife, I told you that. <laughs> no, the wardrobe has mirrors on it. Is this your camera? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, done through the, uh, <laughs> the history of that. <laughs> the, uh, has big mirrors on it. And I'll be, I sat, I, was, I remember sitting there before coach, before games, I'll be sitting there, I'll be saying, I'll be thinking, if I can get the players up, and I, I can portray what I want to say correctly, and I can motivate them, then we're going to win the game. If I can't, and if I say something wrong, then they're not going to, they're not going to buy in what I'm, what I'm selling. So then they're just going to give up. So I've got to practice that. And I'll be looking, sitting in front of the mirror, looking at myself, just talking to myself, going, oh, you know, oh, what am I saying, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be looking at myself in the mirror, I'll be saying, Determination, effort, these are the things, and I'll be looking at my facial expressions and I'll be thinking, is this the right body language? If I say, guys, you've got to be determined, <laughs> then they'll be like, I look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> then I've got to feel confidence in me, whereas I go, guys, be determined, get in there, win the ball, win the hard ball. This is what we, this is what we love doing, this is what we really love doing. And then I think, oh, I can feel that energy off myself, and I get pretty pumped up when I look at myself and I'm giving myself a pump-up speech. <laughs> and I think, this is going to work, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to say this same thing, I'm going to practice. And that's, that's about practicing. Be prepared. Say your speeches in front of everybody else, in front of, the, in front of the mirror. Even in front of the mirror, if you're on your way somewhere and you're looking in the rear view mirror and you're just talking to yourself. Just practice and just say the things. Because it's amazing. The stuff, you, the stuff you prepare on paper, then you start saying it out loud and you go, that sounds so stupid. Like, oh, that doesn't make sense. Like, I wrote it down and it sounds awesome on paper. But then I started reading it and I started saying it. It doesn't make sense. So practice, practice, practice. Finally, have fun. Because there's no point getting up here and just not having fun, not having a laugh. Like, if you can get up and you can get everybody a bit of participation, everyone laughing and everyone's enjoying it and you're enjoying it and you're having confidence in your, in your speaking and you're just having a bit of fun, then you're more relaxed. When you, when you, you, you learn more when you have fun. There's lots of studies. If you want to learn more, play a game and have fun. People are more confident when they play games and have fun. That's probably why hackathons are so much fun. Because every, it's like a game, and everyone wants to hack it out. Everyone, again, it's a lot of fun. It's a game. And so we all learn a lot more, and we probably love, we've probably become better programmers or better developers because we're hacking it out, and it gives us the confidence. And it's just like presenting. Go up there, have a bit of fun. Who cares what people think? People can judge you. Of course they can judge you. Everyone can judge you. Some people are judgy people, like our Eileen, because it's in her personality. And there's probably a few others in the room that are judgy people. And that's what you want. You want people to judge you, but you want to have a bit of fun. And the more fun you have, Let's judge if people are, maybe. Not sure. So, any questions? <laughs> Can we hear a little bit more about you pumping yourself up in the mirror? Pump-up speech? No, it's all right. It's all right. That's just me trying to... Well, you didn't mention anything about navigation in your speech there. I know that's one I've heard a lot. Do you, have you ever had trouble with that? Like, obviously, you're trying to guide the crowd or your team or anything else through the material or the idea or wherever it is. Have you ever had to deal with the navigation problem, like as in the matter where you're going, what, where you're starting from, where you're heading? Do you mean like the one that you just, you just get that from looking in the mirror so much that it figures it out? Do you mean like the weather crowd? Like so you've got, a, you've got a set of material, you're, you're pumping it up for a game or you're, you're trying to teach someone some new idea, mm. some new way to have fun. How do they know where you are in the presentation if you haven't given them navigation? And you just do that. Do you mean the navigation down the bottom? Like actual physical no, navigation? No, no, well, it can be. That's one way to do it. How to direct the crowd to where you want them to go. Just, I guess, giving them an idea where you're up to in the journey. So, effectively, when you're doing a speech, it's a journey. They might not know where you are or where you're headed. Like, yeah. uh, probably one of the things, I don't know, obviously you've done a bit of work on this, um, but have you ever had that problem? Like, in one of your speeches, you think people always bear with you? I've probably never really thought about it, to be honest. I mean, like saying, No, no, I think it's the guy to get home. You don't know how long this, the president's going to be. You don't know if you're going to end any second or if you're like in the middle of it. Or Pretty much most of the material you see, whether it's a book, whether it's a speech, the wood ones always are about knowing it. You know, is this the bit I'm meant to focus on? Or is this just the, the warm up bit? Yeah. You know, it, sometimes it can be helpful to say, oh, we're going to go through a bit of a warm up first, guys, so we get you in the mood. You 
kind of did that. You may not have realized you did it, but you did do that. Yeah, we're going to get into the, you know, the, the details and at the end we're going to have questions. Yeah, it's a good point. Do you think that point. helps with the confidence Definitely that you help. start, or is that presenting in general? Like being, does it help you as a presenter? Um, be, I don't well, think it matters whether it helps out. you or not. Yeah. I think because the whole output of this is up to do with you. You know, you, you, yeah. you do, yeah, all those things will help you do a better job, but the output ultimately is, is, is like you said, the material has to reach the people. Mm. It has I to guess get people right. pumped up for the game. Yeah. 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 But I don't think that's what this talk was about, though. Yeah. 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 That's more about content, and yours is more about the actual presentation and yes. delivering yeah. of it. Yeah. So, so I think navigation comes in. Uh, no, if I come into the, I guess, the confidence of it, yeah. like you were saying, if you kind of forget where you are, or you look at the, I guess when you're looking at people, when you're presenting, when you're public speaking, you can, sometimes you can tell, if you if you work on it and you work on body language, you can look at everybody and you think, yeah, maybe everyone looks a bit lost. And then you're like, why does everyone feel lost? Maybe I'm not portraying the right point. Yeah. Maybe I'm not coming up with the right thing. Is that what you mean? Yeah, maybe yeah. I'm not spending enough time. I have to spend a bit more time getting yeah. people like, they would nod when they get it, usually. You didn't mention that either. We were doing it a lot. Nodding. Yeah. I know you're looking for it, I guess that was. Not everybody nods. <laughs> not everybody nods. Yeah. I nod. One thing I think you missed, though, In the bleachers. Was, uh, which you did anyway, by the way, is yeah. interacting with an audience. Like, I know that, that's one slide that I'd say definitely should be in there, which you did anyway as a presenter. Because I know when I'm listening to a presentation or presenting to somebody, I feel like it's a much more powerful message or powerful presentation when you interact with the audience. And I don't think that was in there as part of the presentation style. Do you see what I mean? Like, yeah. interacting with different parts of the audience definitely is what you're doing. I guess what Shreem was saying, like, this was about, this presentation was about how to be confident for yourself. Yeah. So do you think that would make you more yeah, confident so. if you could interact with everybody? Yeah. I think in there you, you, mess, you, you, you said about what presentation style works and how yeah. to sort of. Conversation stuff might be yeah. a bit with it. Yeah. If you're really wanting to have a conversation, you have to feel like you're connected. So there's nothing worse than somebody reading from a PowerPoint presentation. Exactly. And you're just like, yeah. Pull off the chair halfway through. And they're standing like this. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> yeah. Done that a few times. Um, this might be a bit more of an observation, just curiosity, but. In any of your research, have you looked into like translating some of this to virtual meetings? I think for a lot of us, we're obviously now dealing with this problem. I'm finding with stand-ups where stand-up is actually crouching over a 15-inch Mac <laughs> with three other people. And so that stand-up, project your voice, walk around the room is quite hard to do. Yeah. And, and obviously you can't read the body language of people receiving the message as well as you can in your room. So have you done any research or read anything about you know, how to translate some of these techniques into a virtual environment? No. Okay. Sounds like that would be an excellent topic. I was just going to say yeah. that'd be a good topic to do. A lot, a lot of people look at the cam, like look at them, look at the people, well, yeah, people yeah. and just not eye contact. And we just have this look at someone in the eyes and actually understand what they're saying. It is very, yeah, that's we've a really good point. We had this problem we noticed the other day. We've been putting our, you know, putting it up on the big screen so we can see the screen and we can see them, but we're all looking at the screen and the webcams over here. So to, you know, just feel like our message isn't going to come across as well when we're looking. But it's, I don't know, maybe we, maybe we need some physical office changes so we've actually got standing places where there's an iMac or a Thunderbolt display where you can go and actually still stand up, look in, look in their eyes, kind of stand up the llama and put a camera on his head. Yes. <laughs> I love the llama. Um, yeah, I like the points about, you know, like making yourself big and that kind of thing. Um, one thing the other day when Dave Drinkle was up here and I don't know how anyone was on the talk, but he, I don't think it was intentional, but he just sat down yeah. on the chair and he just talked to us. And to, for me, I thought that was a display of confidence that he knew the topic. Yeah. He was going to converse with us on like there wasn't he wasn't speaking not so much down to us or at us. It was just like here's the here's the information and we're all part of it. Like, so I guess there's think. different types of presentations. Yes. Yeah. So there's meetings, which is a different, which is a, a meeting. Then there's the the workshop, which sitting down, everyone's yeah, asking. Yeah. Participation. Then there's the presentations where you're more like a lecturer, I guess, and you sort of do like a TED talk where people get up there and they don't actually get any questions at the end. And then you've got a bit of both. So there's lots of different types of like ways to present. But I guess, yeah, I mean, if, if that makes you feel more confident, I mean, sitting down, and if that gives you the confidence, then 
and so it's about. Yeah. So if you can project your confidence to everybody else, and that might have made Dave feel really confident. Yeah. Personally, looking at him with the body language, uh, just not to judge too much, because the message was fantastic. But he did not look confident at all. No, I think and he did looking at his body language, he kept putting his hand between his legs, yes. and he let like, crossing his things. Yeah, and I thought he looks so nervous right now. But isn't like, really he really needs to pee? But he's different. Though. Though. He may, he's got such confidence in his domain knowledge that yeah. it doesn't matter if he's talking to you or like, yeah. he knows exactly so, what he's talking about. So there's no kind of question. Of the presentation style is kind of around. Yeah. Yeah. There's no like, question about his domain knowledge. Yeah. So that's probably why he gets. I don't think there's a question about his domain knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he wasn't presenting, not really. He was yeah, educating. I think, I think there's a difference um, between confidence in speaking aloud to multiple people and just confidence in talking about a subject. Yeah. He, put, he put the context of that discussion in a place where he was comfortable. Yeah. And to, to have a discussion, that's why he put it like that. So he was confident. Um, this talk is specifically talking about how personally for you to think about the show and exude confidence in front of people and talking to many people about certain subjects. Why I tend to that with there's no point in being confident and 100 percent confident if you don't know your topic, right? Yeah. Because you if you go out there and start bouncing around and you have no idea what you're talking about, I don't think you're a moron. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no because <laughs> least you uh, 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 yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you should you never know. Actually as leaders you you never know if that's hundred percent of the whole thing. At least have a, a you, basis, right? You, you, yeah, exactly. But exactly that point, like where you, you can always understand a, a, a picture of it and not be able to answer every specific It's important what did cover that, though, too. Yeah. You did so talk about how confident I was because you knew yourself. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, exactly. I think with Dave, too, like Dave was like, with peers, right? So he's sitting down talking in a quiet room doing that thing. But I reckon if he was at some external conference for people who he didn't know, he wouldn't be sitting like this with his laptop going. So, yeah, what the network I, Yeah, I was just going to say, right, so I, I've lectured, and there's a significant difference between lecturing and doing this. A significant difference. It doesn't even matter if the topics that I'm talking about are similar. There is a very, like, there's difference in the preparation, there's difference in how you do it, there's difference in how you stand, there's difference in how you talk. It's, it's significantly different. And I would liken what Dave did the other day to a lecture, yeah. not to a presentation. Well, like a, a panel with a bunch of people behind the desk, and it's a more relaxed kind of... Mm. It's like it's, it's almost like he knew we needed to hear what he was saying. Yes. Whereas when he present, present, we were voluntarily. It's like I hope they want to hear what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah. But you've got to use your body and everything else to get them to connect with us. Engage. Yeah. Cool. Cheers, bud. Good talk.